You're listening to the Nerd to Know Media Network. Join us at nerdtoknowmedia.com. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Doing It For The Exposure, the show that tried to tell you that they know someone who can do it cheaper. I'm your host, Mannequin Blue, and today's special guest is the Jill of All Trades and proud nerd, Miss Lyra Fox, also known as Awesome Fox 42 Hello. How are you doing today? I'm good, I'm good. I uh, ventured the brave outdoors and bought house paint because my room is my jail cell and I'm really really sick at looking this dirty pale pink that's on the wall so I need a change of scenery. Your room will be your canvas. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and what kind of stuff that you do? Well um, as Miss Lyra Fox I'm a burlesque and singing performer though I haven't done a show in oh would you look it's it's been nearly a year now. <laughs> Due to various reasons, like last year, I got diagnosed with hypothyroidism, so I was tired all the time and just couldn't perform. I had to just kind of take a step away and go, I'm too sick. <laughs> but in terms of the Awesome Fox 42 stuff, I have been drawing for years and my big things that I love are like sculpting and watercolors. And I, like as of the end of last year, I got really into embroidery, but I mostly just like sketch. I've done stuff as of last year to help me just kind of like create more in a limited like workspace I also purchased myself a heckin tablet one of those you know second screen you just boot up your um, software and draw digitally so I've been doing a lot of that as well oh awesome I'm so jealous I want one of those <laughs> it was a compromise between me and someone I knew they were going to pay for half and it was if they hadn't paid for half of it, then there was no way I would have been able to afford one. It's, and it's not even top of the line. It's mm -hmm. a, an XP Pen 16, which I think is pretty good, but it's no, you know, Wacom. And it's, I don't use Photoshop. I use Clip Studio is what I use, which is the new name for Manga Studio, because that was a set price of 50 quid. Whereas you've got your Photoshops that are subscription based. And I was like, nope, not going to subscribe to something that's going to cost me X amount every month. I'm a student. I'm far too poor for that. I know they say that you got to spend money to make money, but like we're artists. Yeah, I ain't making no money. I've gotten <laughs> like one commission in a year. <laughs> oh no. So how did you get into, like you said that you did performance and I know you're not performing right now, but like, how did you get into that? I love telling this story because anytime someone asks about my love of Jessica Rabbit, I was actually dressed as Jessica Rabbit for Halloween back in 2015, 2014, I think. And I was approached by Graham Squeaker in his full uh, skeleton paint mask. Trademark and, Graham. Yeah, trademark Graham. And he goes, what's that song she sings? So I sang a few bars and he goes, you should do burlesque. And I had never thought of it before in my entire life. And it just like hit me in the face. So I got in touch with them. I started uh, doing some stagehand stuff. And then that yeah, would have been 2014. Because 2015 I had my first show. And the mic stopped working <laughs> partway through my song. <laughs> <sighs> and I like panicked. But yeah, and then I took a bit of a break. And then came back into it. And have been performing in no way regularly since. <laughs> Well, yeah, but I mean, I don't, you don't necessarily have to be performing all the time, you know, to be considered a performer. Yeah, no, I, I don't do it regularly at all. Um, I know a lot of people go full on in, but I find it so mentally and physically exhausting that yeah. I like, like, I think once I had a show two nights in a row and I'd never felt more drained in my life. And I was like, fair play to those who like, this is their, like, you know, everything that they do. And I envy that, but but I can't. I love doing it for the fun of it when I can do it. And that's part of why I'm really bad at keeping up with the Miss Lyra Fox social media. Because <laughs> I'm just like, no, no. If someone wants to book me and I get to sing a song and it's not a karaoke, then all for it. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, I, I'm always fascinated to hear people's, I guess you could call them origin stories, because they're always crazy. <laughs> 
Yeah, well, I suppose it is an origin story, like, uh, especially for the performance of Burlesque and stuff like that, because you have a stage name. So it's kind of like, how did that specific person be born? You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. No, this is this is the thing, because, you know, it's one thing to say, oh, yeah, I just do it. But like, how? Why? Yeah. Um, no, that's cool. And you do, you said that you do digital art as well. Yeah, I have taken to streaming a lot of it when I do do it, particularly... What was it? I did one piece for the anxiety subreddit because I found this game called Adventures with Anxiety and it's a free like browser game and it's adorable. But you play as the anxiety and the anxiety is like this jagged red wolf. But throughout the game, everyone's anxiety took the form of something different. So I said to the subreddit, I was like, hey, here's the concept. Like, tell me what your anxiety is. And I'll compile a list and I'll draw them all out for you. So I did like a big, huge piece. And that's not something I would have been able to do on paper because I just, I stay away from having large notebooks and stuff like that because my room is just tiny. And so I was able to just fit them all into one digital piece and send it off and show them and it was great. And then I did some fan art that I streamed for a YouTube channel called Triple Jump. They were playing Bioshock. So I did Ben and his, his two sons, his robot sons, because every time he came across a robot he could hack, he said, ah, it's my son. So I just did a nice little composition and uh, did that. So I'm hoping, because I've recorded them all, I'll be able to do sped up videos and just put them up on YouTube. Oh, cool. Yeah. And how did you start streaming? Because I think you're the first person I've talked to that has mentioned that they actually stream their art. Well, it was from... Well, like, like I watch if I watch a couple of streamers that do art, it's really interesting to see their process. It is usually like digital stuff, so you can kind of see like it's a good way of like looking at a layout of a software. So you can kind of see like, oh, well, you can do that with it. Oh, you can learn that trick and stuff like that. So I'd watch them and just watch their art and in general. And basically, I'd be telling someone on Discord like, oh, I'm gonna draw this, and they were like, oh, cool, and I'm like like send me progress and stuff like that so okay it got to a point where I'm like well I'll just stream it and put some nice music on in the background and if you just want to watch you can watch if you don't want to you don't want to but either way it means I can do a time lapse at the end of it because it automatically records it if I'm streaming it on my computer so and like I already had all that stuff because I planned to do YouTube channels based on video games and stuff like that so uh, I've got some footage I never end up doing anything with it but I do have footage of games recorded as well that I plan to do videos out of because what else am I going to do while I'm stuck in my house for the summer? <laughs> <laughs> We're still in lockdown. Uh, <laughs> it's not over, you guys. <laughs> places may be open, but when you're asthmatic, you stay the heck in slight. <laughs> oh, no, that's fair. No, I'm just looking at your art here and you do quite a bit of fan art, but you also do quite a bit of I'm looking at your own stuff, which is a bit wild do are you we want to talk about that are we talking about the demony guys well the demony guys and there's the spider cat um... ah yes that was inspired by a trip i took to get a spider from miss kitty larue <laughs> okay uh, that makes sense <laughs> yeah for some like i think it's on the the work in progress one we were sitting on separate seats because we had to each mind a spider and we needed space and uh, it's like, only spiders, that's all we have in stock. And I went arachna kitties, and she went kitty spider hybrids, yes. And I went, well, that's an idea. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I think that was one of the first things I did on my tablet when I got it. And I was like, oh, this is a lot of fun. So I got like just a picture of a cat skeleton and was able to like help judge from that. It's a great thing about doing digital art is that my spatial awareness is helped a lot by the fact that I can use layers. <laughs> so I can have it right there underneath what I'm drawing to be able to be like, okay, so it's around this part of it. But when it comes to the demony things, a lot of them come from just kind of mental health stuff. So basically when I feel like sad or, you know, I can't sleep because of insomnia or if I have like a sore stomach, they're, they're, they're essentially what I'm feeling. And usually like with the anxiety and the sadness and stuff, being able to sit there with black ink after sketching it out and just like going over lines and like filling in around it is just really calming for me. So I always joked that someone would see me drawing one of them and be really disturbed and then I'd look up at them and smile because I feel so much better. <laughs> <laughs> My demons are helping me. 
Yeah, pretty much. Like they're my own little personal demons. And once I put them on, it's the same as like talking about your problems or writing out about your problems. Sometimes I can't verbalize it, so I draw it. That's fascinating. Because, yeah, a lot of people would kind of shy away from that side of things. And there's, but it is, it is a big thing on social media where artists will draw out, you know, their demons or what they're feeling or. Hashtag artist therapy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely <laughs> hashtag therapy art they always go under my demons because that's exactly what they are they're just me chilling out calming my mind down with a lot a lot of black ink there's just something i think there's just something soothing about black ink yeah it's just it's simple you don't have to worry like i you know how they were like oh coloring books are great for your mental health and chilling out no they're not because you have to think what color goes where what kind of color palette do you want for this picture it's too stressful for me <laughs> there's too much pressure <laughs> yeah it's absolutely and plus the fact that i've got hypermobility so all the joints in my hands they just tire out so easily so sitting down with color and pencils is not my idea of a fun time it's just gonna mean I won't be able to do anything with my hands for the next 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, colouring with, with pencil and stuff, that can be quite repetitive and straining on, you know, on someone who's not... Hypermobile. Hypermobile, yes, thank you. Like that, <laughs> that can be straining enough, so I, yeah. I can't imagine what it's like. Oh yeah, even drawing with a pencil sometimes, like I drew for the first time in a, for the first time in a while, a couple of days ago, and afterwards my hands were in bits and I was like, oh no. <laughs> So that kind of factors into how infrequent I post on the Awesome Fox 42 account because I just don't create enough because I'll have ideas, but I'm like, if I start drawing, then that's me out of commission for about 10 minutes afterwards, feeling like it's time to pop a painkiller afterwards. So the Ouch. upside of the digital tablet is that like it doesn't put as much pressure because I don't need to do like as precise movements. And if I do make a mistake, it's just one button. Yeah, well, that, that is the nice thing about digital art as well, is that you've got things like predictive drawing and, and uh, steady hand drawing and, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, and like the amount of lovely things I've drawn that I have not coloured, simply because I'm like, I'm going to screw this up, I'm going to pick it wrong, or I'm going to colour outside the lines accidentally, something's going to bleed out. Whereas I will often draw something and then put it up on my computer, try and recreate it digitally. And then I can colour it whatever colour I want and I can change it at like the click of a button. It's fine. Like yeah. I, it's so much just, like stress-free in comparison. Yeah, if you're not sure what colour to do, you know, what colour palette, you just do them all, try them all. Yeah, just, just, just mess around with it. The only downside is that my room is so small and my desk is so small that it's just a headache to set up. Once it's set up, it's fine. <laughs> And it's fun to do, but I kind of have to prepare myself to be like sitting at my desk to draw it and make sure everything's set up the way it is. Yeah. So you do sculpture as well then. And I know that that would be kind of more taxing on the hands. How does, how does that work? I've always loved sculpting. Like when I was in secondary school for the Leaving Cert, I was one of two people that were allowed to do sculpture for the final project because they trusted we wouldn't screw it up. <laughs> So I have a big bag of crank clay that I made sure to ask my old art teacher where to get it from, but that has become too much for my hands. So I use a lot of Sculpey, of course. Sculpey oh, is what yeah, I use Sculpey. a lot of now. Sculpey's great. Yeah, because it's, it's, so, like, it's so malleable that, and easy to move. And I don't have to worry about taking breaks because with the, with the proper clay, you've got to keep working or you've got to wet it again because it's going to dry. Yeah. Whereas with Sculpey, I can just be like, this ain't dry until I put it in the oven. This is fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's not dry until I cook it. <laughs> yeah. It's not dry until I cook it. So I can just keep working at my own pace. But it would, for a finer, finer detail, it would get rough. My mom gave me some plastic gloves that I can put over my compression gloves. I have these little gloves that I got really cheap. I would prefer an actual pair, but this is all I could afford. Mm -hmm. And they basically just like squeeze down on your joints. Right. It's really tight. And that can help a lot with the pain, especially when I'm doing fine movements and stuff like that in terms of sculpting. But I don't do a lot of that because, well, where's it going to go? <laughs> I only do, I even when I do small stuff, I'm like, where will I put it? <laughs> <laughs> I have I, limited space. <laughs> Yeah, I already have two photo frames that have, one of them has a cactuar that I made in Sculpey, like, and then I basically got the idea of, 
doing slab work on Sculpey and putting it in a photo frame and then putting the frame back together and then it's like a full piece. So I've got two of them just in my room with nowhere to go because I don't want to store them in properly because then they might get wrecked. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I'm like, what, what do I, where do I put them? So I've been put off like sculpting stuff because I'm like, where will it go? There's no room in my room to put like the amount of Lego I would own alone if I had room. I have one thing of Lego and it's of Venice. And that's because it was small enough to fit on a shelf. And even then that gets moved around because I'm like, you're in the way. <laughs> and yeah, and so many, like there's so many more sculptures that I'd have if I just had the room. Yeah, th no, this is always the problem. Like even with, when I very occasionally, very rarely will dabble in sculpture as well or costume or whatever it is. And you make something and you're like, it's fine, I'll just sell it. But then it's like a year later, it's still sitting on the shelf. Yep. You know, where do I put it? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's great for when you're making presents, but uh, that only happens like once or twice a year. So you're like, right. It's the upside of the embroidery is that it's a lot easier to store because <laughs> it's just material. Although the amount of different colored thread has gotten insane. But even then, that's probably the smallest amount of storage that I've needed for an entire medium. <laughs> It's one Cadbury's box that's in my drawer in my desk, and that's it. Oh, it's 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 not a biscuit box. <laughs> no, no, close though. It was just it was something I got at Christmas, a box of Cadbury's chocolates, and a, like a tin. And so I was like, oh, perfect. And I just happened around the same time, got a buttload of different coloured threads, and I was like, happy days. Actually, I wonder, does anybody even use those? You know, you find the biscuit tin and you open it and it's full of, like, sewing equipment. I wonder, does anybody actually do that anymore? Well, we don't in my house simply because we upgraded to a proper sewing kit. <laughs> 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 but just because my mom used to do sewing as her job and she still had a sewing machine for a long time and still does, actually. I keep meaning to uh, learn the skills of it so I can make my own clothes. And... Like she used to work for the Dominican brothers across the street from us. And mm -hmm. anytime their trousers had a hole, she'd be taking it home and she'd be under with the sewing machine. So I think it's, it entirely depends on what you have available. And she just had so much stuff. Like I actually raided it the other day to get the fabric scissors, which is this giant foot long scissors. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at it in my hand. I'm like, yeah, no, it's about a foot long and it's heavy because I needed to cut up an old t-shirt to make a mask. So, oh yeah, I've I've seen those fabric scissors memes. Uh yeah, no, it's no, but like this this is like a garden shears. This thing, like it's not just <laughs> it's not just like don't use my fabric scissors. Nothing could penetrate this thing. I think this thing is older than I am, and it has never <laughs> lost its <a> edge. <laughs> well, I mean, you never know when you're gonna have to cut up a circus tent. Like, hang on. That's the sound of it. <laughs> it's like, whoa! Yeah, you don't, cut, you don't cut paper with that thing just because you don't need to. It's, the other scissors will do fine. You don't want to take that out unless you mean business. <laughs> it's such a badass scissors. You try and cut anything other than fabric with it. There's just nothing left. It just disintegrates. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll just melt. It won't even cut. It'll just melt. It, it, the sheer awesome power of the of the, the fabric scissors. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna end up drawing fan art of my mom's fabric scissors now. <laughs> Give it its own personality. I feel like it should have, should have a name. <laughs> Just do a hashtag. I don't know, giant scissors or something. <laughs> mega scissors. The mega scissors. Yeah, I'll put a picture up on my Instagram later. Just to show you what I mean and I even have another normal regular house scissors right next to it just to kind of emphasize to myself whoo that's a big boy <laughs> oh. like the screw alone <laughs> I'm sorry but I'm just looking at like the screw alone is huge yeah you're gonna have to send us a picture of that so we can include it in the stream <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> absolutely I'll have the other one there for reference don't worry <laughs> So for anyone who's listening at home and are thinking that they want to, you know, try some of the stuff that you do, even like maybe even especially people who would have a hard time with their hands, what kind of advice could you give them? I'd say take breaks. 
like don't push yourself that's the main thing compression gloves are great especially if you're not working with clay so it doesn't get stuck to it but yeah no take like taking it slow taking a breaks try not to lean too hard on your pencil like I do that's part of my problem <laughs> try not uh, to do what I do <laughs> yeah yeah but these are like habits ingrained from nearly 30 years of doing art because I would always lean in hard on my pencils and it's just hard for me to do otherwise because then I get completely in the zone but a lot of it would be just don't be ashamed of taking breaks don't be like I think there's a lot of kind of oh a true artist wouldn't do this a true artist wouldn't do that that kind of horrible discourse and I'm like art is art as long as you're not directly copying someone else's work and you know saying it's your own then pretty much anything goes so take and breaks use references if you can because I have dyscalculia as well so I'm like spatial awareness is horrible <laughs> and I just can't like so using references and yeah just being gentle on your hands my mom also has like really bad arthritis in her fingers so she which is thanks to that one of my greatest fears is losing my hands but using like a squeeze ball to kind of like exercise it so that when you do do art like the little tendons aren't as worn out so just kind of like exercising your hands a little bit keep them warm because when they're cold it's gonna be even tougher on your joints as well so like I can never I think the worst time I ever had was when I did an art course and part of it was work experience where we had to go to Inishir in October oh <laughs> and have to draw outside <laughs> uh, it was not a good time my sculpture that we had to make at the end of it was of a woman being choked by the sea and I was like this is twofold one it was very like kind of they were always hounding us to be outside go do art go do this and the second of is that because I was forced to be outside I came home with a chest infection <laughs> on oh. top of like aching joints and everything I was like I hate you all <laughs> Yeah, and this this is something that's renowned with all artists is that we do suffer for our art. Oh yeah, absolutely. And that that's something I'm always saying. Like they prob people have probably heard me say it on the show before, but it's just it's it like it is. <laughs> yeah, no, like I know what it's like to get into the into your steez and just be really focused, but giving your hands a little break, even if it's just a minute or two, can really help just kind of make it so that when the art is finished or you know that you're even able to finish the art because you're not crippling yourself that when the art is finished you can go make yourself a cup of tea without you know wincing every time you do it yeah and and actually the, the thing that you said about play with the stress ball and, and keep your hands warm it, it's kind of it would be akin to doing stretches before you work out really yeah yeah no art is i like i say art is a muscle in itself because the more you do it the better you get at it because I've said you, you know yourself you've had a lot of people go oh that's great I wish I could do that and I'm like I've been kind of doing it for like most of my life so that's the only reason I can get this point yeah because um, even my little niece she was like oh I wish I could draw like you and I was like honey I've got 20 years ahead of you <laughs> like that's the only reason I'm better is because I keep at it so you keep at it as well but it's the same in that as much as doing the art itself is a muscle like there are muscles in your hands you need to do a warm-up before you can go do the mad stuff like <laughs> you, you wouldn't just go for a 5k run after no training yeah no this is this is true and art is very it's very physical it's very full-on yeah it's more physical than people realize like even just a simple sketch obviously you're using all the muscles in your hand if you're doing clay then who boy you're using like most of your arm a lot of the time especially if it's not something small the bigger it is the more muscles you're using and then so like I'm just trying to think of more mediums like painting and stuff like that keeping your arm steady all this all the different movements that you do with your arm like that's me using all the muscles in your arms like do you try keeping your arm in the air for like five minutes straight doing nothing yeah and it's gonna start hurting a lot of the time when you're like especially on at an easel and stuff like that that's essentially what you're doing except you're moving your arm which makes it even worse <laughs> but you don't think about it because you're working yeah and then once you realize they're like oh so you know having it all stretch the arms and making sure you take a break to kind of stretch out your arms stretch out your back whatever way you're sitting and stuff like that it's really important yeah and not to mention the strain that it would put on your eyes and your mind and because you're concentrating oh, yeah. you know oh yeah yeah no absolutely like it's especially when you're doing digital works you know they, they say 
shouldn't stare at a screen for too long. You need to look away. It's like, absolutely do that. Because if you're doing digital work, not only are you concentrating super hard on your artwork, but you're also doing it staring at a screen, staring across two screens, most likely. <laughs> you're usually like right up at the screen as well. Oh yeah, no, I'd be hunched, hunched over and everything. So I have to take regular breaks. You usually find that that's when I drink my most tea. <laughs> and Because um, I like just having it there while I'm having to think. And I'll sit there with my cup of tea. And it's a perfect time. I have to start using a smaller mug so I get up for more breaks. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. yeah. Don't like as 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 appealing as it is to use the big mug, try using a smaller one. <laughs> so that you'll get up more often. Yeah, get out of your chair, get, just walk away for a bit. Yeah. Stretch your legs, stretch your arms while you're doing it, and make yourself a cup of tea. Yeah, absolutely. So where is the best place for people to keep up to date with you? I'd say mostly it's the Awesome Fox 42 Instagram, but even on Twitter, it's the same Awesome Fox 42. And from there, you can find the Instagram, you can find my Twitch, and whenever I upload anything, like I generally put it up on the uh, Twitter first. But for the burlesque and performer stuff, it would be following Miss Lara Fox on Instagram. Awesome. And before we go, is there anything that you would like to talk about that we haven't covered yet? No, no, no. I'm, 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 I'm pretty happy. Are you? Yeah, well, I mean, it's not about me. <laughs> this is your moment. This is your time to shine. <laughs> but I'm sharing the spotlight because the spotlight is big enough for us all. <laughs> but boom. Well, yeah, but I'm here every week. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I don't need the time to shine. I'm good. <laughs> no, actually, there is, there is one thing, uh, one more thing that I would ask you about before you go. Because um, you mentioned singing. Yeah. So do you want to talk a bit about that before we wrap it up? I love singing. It is a bit like the non-paper version of my comfort. So in the same way I draw the demons, you'll generally find that if I'm in a bad mood, I'll kind of sing a little sad song to myself. And yeah, singing in general is just always, it's something I've always loved. I grew up listening to Garth Brooks and Elvis Presley. Convinced one was my dad and one was my uncle and my mom was heartbroken to tell me neither of that was true. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave you to guess which one I thought was my dad and which one I thought was my uncle. Yeah, so when it comes to sit, like, as I said, just because I love singing, like I fell, I probably fell in love with it as well from watching Jessica Rabbit in Who Framed Roger Rabbit because I watched that film at a far, far too young age. And, <laughs> I think um, we all did. <laughs> no, it was hilarious because I, I got really into the Disney films as we all did as a kid and I would sing every word because something about music, I can remember nearly every word to a song once I've heard it once, even if I don't even like the song. Mm -hmm. And I've been at, like, I used to do spoken word poetry and stuff, so there'd be open mic nights and there'd be someone bringing along their brand new song that they've just written. And by the time, the second time the chorus came around, I was singing along with them because I could pick up the beats so easily. <laughs> Not to toot my own horn, to toot. So I was so into the movies that my granddad said it to my Auntie Anne, how into movies I was. So she thought to bring it upon herself to give me an education and gave me two VHS tapes. One was Who Framed Roger Rabbit? And the other one was Ewoks The Battle for Endor. <laughs> that was my first Star Wars movie. That is terrifying as a movie with some of the puppets in that. <laughs> but that was my first Star Wars movie. And yeah, I just ate up. I wanted to be like Jessica Rabbit so badly. And I loved that song so much. And when I dressed up for a Halloween, I got my opportunity to sing in front of people. So now I use it to, I either do video game songs like I did um, Still Alive from Portal one time uh, that's a great song yeah and I, I did myself up like a robot it was great I've done uh, Be Prepared where I give myself it's a great chance for me to experiment with makeup and face paint because I did myself up like Scar for that one mm -hmm. but then I also do a lot of like Eartha Kitt is a big favourite of mine so you'll very rarely find me doing a modern song <laughs> it's always like either these old croonier classics or it's something pop culture related which I think is very me <laughs> yeah I mean you play to your own style definitely yeah no there's there's no point in, in doing something that you're not into yeah no like my mom we have very similar music tastes the like even when a good example of how much it's a comfort to me I hate cooking and baking I find it very stressful baking less so but if I'm in the kitchen having to do stuff out comes the Great American Songbook CD collection I was given. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty sure it's the only reason 
my mom lets me play music when she's in the kitchen is because we have very similar tastes because <laughs> I was like aren't you glad I have good taste in music and she's like aren't you glad because otherwise you wouldn't be allowed to play it <laughs> I was like yeah fair oh that's great um Lyra it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the show oh it's been a pleasure to be here about again <laughs> and for anybody listening at home we're gonna pop the links to Lyra's social media in the description so that you can keep up to date with her check out her art check out her burlesque check out everything because we have to support our artists anything you'd like to say before we go support your artists and take breaks have tea yeah <laughs> art and tea art and tea <laughs> and that is the tea tea is the solution to it all yeah, I'm sure there's a t-shirt in that. So in there somewhere. <laughs> a t-shirt? A t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> that made um, us laugh way too hard. Yeah. We, we need to get outside a bit more, I think. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well, if you've enjoyed this episode of Doing It For The Exposure and would like to hear more in the future, make sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter at D-I-F-T-E Podcast. You can also check out our stream on nerdtoknowmedia.com. We stream weekly on Spotify, SoundCloud and YouTube. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for listening to a Nerd To Know Media production. 